Hello, bonjour. You're listening to the Curious Jord podcast. My name is Jordan. If you're a returning listener, thanks for coming back. If you're a brand new listener, welcome to the podcast. Basically, this is just me exploring my curiosity, sitting down with interesting people and having an in-depth conversation based on their expertise or their life experience or some topic that uh, they just so happen to know about. Either way, um, I try to keep them around an hour. If they go over, I'm not too concerned about it. Um, I like to listen to longer podcasts, so I'm trying to make longer podcasts to suit what I like to listen to. In this episode, I sit down with John from Cloud Nine, uh, Cloud Nine Float Spa. Cloud Nine Float Spa. There we go. Uh, John was kind enough to give me a complimentary float session, which I took advantage of a few days later. Um, So at the end of this podcast, in the outro, I have a bit more of a detailed, up-to-date float report. Um, For those of you who don't know what a float tank is, um, we get into it right away in the podcast, and John explains it and the benefits of it. So pretty cool podcast. You can check out uh, more information uh, about cloud nine if you go to their facebook page you can also hit up the website the details will be further into the conversation other than that yeah good stuff uh we had an interesting conversation we talked about um every aspect of floating that i can think of it was pretty comprehensive um we also talked about like distractions and the modern age and how uh, float tanks can be sort of a remedy to that, or at least a a temporary fix or a relief from the constant stimulus of our insanely stimulating uh, modern-day lives. Anywho, I'll stop rambling on now, and uh, we'll get to the episode. Hope you enjoy. Here with um, John from Cloud Nine Float Center. Cloud Nine Float Spa. That's right. Float Spa. Yeah, I just wanted to talk to you about. Uh, basically, I want to come at it. I've I've had some experience before in the past with them. I've done a couple floats, so I'm a, a little bit familiar with it. But uh, for someone who has no idea of what a float tank is or a sensory deprivation tank, like there's many different names. There is indeed. Um, could you just lay it out what it is and what it's supposed to do? Absolutely. Flotation therapy in itself is uh, the fact that you are floating in uh, a unit with approximately 11 inches of water where you have 900 pounds of Epsom salts dissolved in the water. Uh, it creates a very dense uh, medium for you to float in, which, is, which allows you to float on the very surface of the water. Basically, your body cannot sink. Um, it is one of the things that uh, most new floaters experiment with they will try and push their bodies under the water to see if this actually works um, and yes uh, by all means please try it but it it uh, it is dense enough to support your body to this if or to the state where it will support your head um, as well um, it is one of the concerns of of new floaters um, the fact that uh, we don't trust the fact that water will support our heads. Um, so one of the, the um, issues we do come across is neck tension for first-time floaters. Um, we do have some suggestions uh, for releasing neck tension, um, but that's probably the the most common physical complaint uh, or mention we get. Um, the other mention we get very often is the fact that people don't know what to do with their minds. Um, It is, unfortunately, in today's life, we are permanently distracted in some way or another. Um, Going into this environment where you are in complete silence and darkness, where you have no other external stimulation, basically you are in there with your mind, and that's all you have. For the first 15 to 20 minutes, most people are very happy with it um, because of the fact that it's still a new experience. Um, After that, unfortunately, um, because of the lack of of, uh, external stimuli, we do start um, basically trying to convince ourselves that this is a terrible idea. 
um, you know, how can I be lying here not doing stuff? I have stuff to do. I, need, you know, life carries on. Um, unfortunately, it seems that we have uh, eventually got to that point in society where we really have to schedule downtime. We actually have to make an appointment to take care of ourselves. Um, and this does that really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, the fact that 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 we that we struggle to be alone with our thoughts is it's just unfortunate. It, it's it's a side effect of society and the way that technology is today and will continue to increase. Um, we are all connected at all points in time. You know, there is the days of of finishing work at. 5 p.m. or 4 p.m. and going home and you're actually done. Just very few and far between. Yeah. You know, we, we all, we're all busy all the time. Yeah. Even with our phones when we're not busy, right? We're exactly. Yeah. Instant yeah. stimulus. Absolutely. And, and we have got used to the fact that, that it is instant gratification. Um, unfortunately, uh, that is one of the, the, uh, concerns we, we do come across with, um, flotation as a therapy. Um, because we are we are growing to become more and more in the now. Things need to happen for us immediately. If there's no if there's no tablet or something I can take for it, I'm really not too interested in spending too much time, which is very unfortunate. Um, yeah. You know, it's we really do need to take some time out of our schedules for ourselves and and take some time to. To give the mind just a little bit of time to to relax, literally, to just not be bombarded all the time with yeah. with, with all of the stimulus. Yeah, I've been experimenting myself lately with just deleting some apps off my phone to just not have that because I'll I'll go to pick up my phone and then if the app's not there, my brain sort of snaps out of it and I'm like, oh, you were just trying, you weren't even conscious that you were picking up your phone to distract yourself. Yeah. And, and now that I've noticed, I'll be like, okay, maybe I'll read a little bit of a book or something, which is still stimulus, but it's more of a passive absolutely yes. information yeah. uh, diet, you know? Um, when you get people coming in to do a float for the first time, are they coming in just because they saw the place or they saw something online? What's the most common way that people get into this? Okay, uh, most uh, most of the floaters that, that we see are either word of mouth recommendations um, or they would have noticed us on, on possibly a promotion that we'd been running um, or uh, we have quite a large following on our Facebook page. Um, so um, I would say a, a very high percentage of my customers are either repeat customers or word of mouth recommendations. Yeah. Um, it's, um, I like to say we are the best kept secret uh in Coquitlam, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that because you can edit that out if you need to. No, that's fine. Um, all right. Yeah. But yes, I mean, I'd like to say we are the best kept secret um, in the area. People yeah. who have lived in the area for years um, and eventually discovered us, you know, one of the first questions we get is, how long have you guys been here? You know, why did I not know you existed? Uh, and unfortunately, the amount of advertising you do on the front of the building is somewhat irrelevant, I believe. Um if people aren't looking for that for that type of service yeah well um, i'm super interested in this kind of thing and i've driven past there a bunch of times and never never, never glanced at it, it right <laughs> that's it yeah yes yeah, so uh, uh we we do get quite a few prob- uh, people that that will come and see us because they've they've developed some sort of problem with uh be it insomnia or backache or joint pain or arthritis any of those types of uh, conditions and they've basically tried everything else, and they're running out of options, um, and found us somehow by doing some research, and try, decided to try this as a therapy, um, and find that it worked. You know, people yeah. are finding that this thing really does work. Um, so that obviously that generates quite a lot of of, of word of mouth um, yeah. uh, interest, I suppose. Yeah. Um, you know, we also try and do. I, I do try and get out and and educate people a little bit um, on. So we, you know, I will go to um, the odd presentation, uh, not necessarily for flotation services, but that would be. Um, there would possibly be a 
a get together for seniors, um, and they would they would possibly ask us to to go and do a little talk or something to that effect. Yeah. So yes, I uh, I find the um, the education aspect of it is an interesting point too because whenever I explain it to somebody or I mention it. First, I have to educate them on what it is. So that's like a little chore, you know? I say, I list the characteristics that you listed earlier. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, now let's talk about what it's like. Absolutely. And what the benefits are. Yeah. So that's an interesting thing. Um, are you familiar with the Joe Rogan podcast? Um, I, I have heard of it. I, I have personally, unfortunately, not listened to it. Okay. But I, yes, I am aware of it. I'm aware yeah. that he, he does podcast quite regularly yeah yeah on, he, um, on his floating. he's a huge proponent proponent of floating yes. right yeah and i had heard about them kind of before and then i started to listen to that and then he's i think he's got one in his house he does indeed he, he does it quite regularly <laughs> he does. Yes. and that's what piqued my interest like and he's such a good evangelist for it as well so i went and i'd done a couple floats afterwards and uh it was interesting because like you said you get in and it's probably unless you've tried to meditate like meditation is probably the closest thing in the loud world to it right absolutely yes it is it is a it is a great tool to help people meditate as well yeah so it's oh yeah it's like the shortcut into meditation it is right? absolutely meditation <laughs> yeah you know, yes absolutely so i remember getting into the tank and it's so unusual because you float on top of the water like kind of midway it's sort of like an iceberg but you know you're just hovering there and then you do try to put your arms underneath and they come back up and you're wiggling around just getting used to the new feeling. And then you gain the courage to actually relax your head and then you realize that you're not going <laughs> to go underwater. Um, and then the earplugs were optional. They gave me like the gooey ones Absolutely. that sort of melded into the ears or yep. whatever. I think I did it without them. I tried it with them, but I found it to be a little bit distracting. Okay. So I was yep. just like, I'll just deal with the water going in and whatever yeah and then if you have any sort of um cuts or anything on your body you feel it because of the salt right? absolutely yes we uh we do recommend and it's a product we have uh, we have a barrier cream in, in oh, okay the, um, so just a petroleum jelly yeah. and we you know part of our, our uh, initial uh, talk to people when they do come in is is the fact that that we do recommend that they use the petroleum jelly for any any scrapes or scrages or nicks or anything like that for that exact reason yeah um because because of, obviously because of the in, incredibly high salt content mm -hmm. yes any tiny little scratch will will irritate you I mean, it'll hurt to start yeah. off with and then yes it will irritate you there's um you get something from the salt as well don't you doesn't your body absorb a bit of it absolutely so basically you are you are floating in magnesium sulfate which is it is a salt but it's it's not obviously not table salt or sea salt so you you're basically floating in magnesium um now we are every single one of us uh, virtually without exception is magnesium deficient in today's life um, unfortunately we cannot get enough magnesium through our diets uh, so most of us take some sort of form of oral magnesium supplement um, unfortunately a very large part of that gets destroyed by our intestinal flora um, as basically as soon as we consume it uh, so very little of it actually makes it into our bloodstream whereas while you're floating in uh, in the, the Epsom salt is what is also known as um, you're absorbing it through your skin. So the biggest organ in your body is actively, well, it doesn't actually do it, is passively absorbing all this magnesium. Um, and because it's self-regulating, it will only absorb up to what it needs. Uh, so your, the, the after effects of the magnesium is actually really, and there are some really good after effects. Uh, or, like, the biggest one is, or the most noticeable one, is probably sleep. Um, most people report sleeping really well for two to three days after the after a float, um, and that is mostly to do with the magnesium. Yes, there is obviously a, an aspect of the mind being able to relax a bit more, yeah. um, and the, the, the entire body having had a relaxation yeah. or relaxing experience yeah but the magnesium has a very big part to do with that um it's also just the, the the magnesium itself is really good for any inflammation so any joint problems um yeah it's that that's in a nutshell basically what you're going to gain 
from the content, from the magnesium itself, just just by being in, in yeah. the water. So even if you're mentally uncomfortable, you're still gaining that physical... You're, uh, yeah, you're absolutely still gaining yeah. the, the physical benefits, benefits of, yeah. of floating. Um, and just, we, having said that, uh, we are reasonably unique in the in the sense that we offer four different types of flotation units um, so most flotation units uh, or pods as they're also known as are fully enclosed um, whereas we have um, and basically the the lid of of the pod would be within sort of two or three feet of your face um, we have we do have two of those units, and we also have a couples unit, which is a, a much larger unit, which allows two people to float side by side, but it is more like a room than it is a pod. Um, and then we have one other unit, which uh, which we specifically are designed to resemble a hot tub. So you have the wooden steps going up into it. Um, you have a hot tub type lid that opens up that does not close over you again. Um, so it, it creates the... Uh, it creates the impression that it's a much more open experience. Um, having said that, once you're actually in the unit and you, you've turned off all your lights, the experience itself is the same because the room itself would be completely dark. Mm -hmm. um, having said that as well, all of the units and all of the rooms uh, have a user accessible light. So if anybody feels nervous at any point in time, they have access to a light. Yeah basically yeah. on hand at any point in time. And most people who, who encounter any type of nervousness, as soon as they turn the light on, everything's you know, sort of back to normal and they can relax again. Yeah. I remember closing the lid for the first time. I was in a closed one. Okay. And I'm not claustrophobic or anything, but I thought how someone could definitely be claustrophobic in one of those things. Um, isn't a benefit, too, of the enclosed ones that the air temperature is similar to the water? Correct. So it creates sort of a... No barrier, no situation. boundary situation. Absolutely, yeah. yes. The uh, the the in fully enclosed units um, are definitely much more stable temperature wise, the air temperature, um, and part of the process of floating is uh, stillness. Um, so you can get to the point where you're completely still. Yes, absolutely. There is no difference between the air temperature, your skin temperature, and the water temperature. So. Basically, what happens is your uh, receptors in your skin become neutral. They cannot differentiate the difference between those medium. So you have absolutely, it literally feels like you're floating in nothing. You would you would probably have experienced this. Yeah, it's just your uh, brain. It is just your brain, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, I, uh, I float often, um, and I somewhere in my float, I have to wiggle my fingers just to make sure that I'm actually still in something. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yes, it is. It's yeah. a very unique experience. I remember feeling my um, my spine sort of like cracking, like cracking, kind of separating like a little bit, you know, relaxing, relaxing for the first time. Uh, yes, definitely, we do get uh, reports of that once again quite often, and and this this uh, most of this I can actually I can actually speak to from personal experience as well. Um, because of the fact that your muscles can completely relax, you're not fighting gravity or pressure or anything. Yes, your your back will release. So any any of the popping sounds you hear when you when you go and visit a chiropractor or a massage therapist, this is happening naturally, just because of the fact that your your muscles are getting to a state of complete relaxation. Yeah, the first time, my very first flow, I went in, and I had high expectations. Right, I thought like I'm going to start tripping out. Absolutely, psychedelic realms. <laughs> yep, and uh, I'm laying there. And like I'm focusing on my breathing, and maybe after ten minutes, I start to feel like inside my body, like kind of a, a rumbling, almost like a bass. And then it went away, and I was like, "Oh no!" Like it brought me out of it, like it going away. Yeah. And then maybe like five minutes later, I started to feel it come back again. And then this kept happening for maybe a half an hour. And then I realized I thought about where I was. The float center was above a subway, and it was the subway, subway going by underneath. <laughs> 
Hey. Like, this is terrible. Why was, how did they not see this, like the forethought to put this somewhere else? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Well, especially if you're in that state, you, you're, all your senses are so heightened. You yeah. just, you just, your brain is screaming and searching for any little bit of stimulus that it can find. So yes, absolutely. Anything in the very, you know, in the vague background or, or as you say, the rumbling or anything like that, yeah. you, you're going to start concentrating on that and you're going to get to the point where you're like, okay, well, it's got to be coming up soon. Like, you know, it's going to, and yeah, it, it does defeat the purpose a bit. I, uh, I must admit the practical side of trying to keep uh, the flotation units soundproofed and, and completely quiet is challenging. Um, I, unless you're actually in some subterranean vault somewhere, um, we've noticed that uh, for no reason whatsoever, all of a sudden somebody will decide, you know, to do maintenance on the building and, you know, in the unit next door and start drilling into the walls or something yeah. to that effect. Yeah. Um, and of course that, that is absolutely as far removed from what we want as you could possibly get. Yeah. Um, the one good thing is that does happen. We've been very lucky. Our customers have been great you know, when something like that. Obviously, we, you know, we would say to them, you know, please, by all means, come back at some other point in time when you don't have all these distractions. Yeah. Um, and yes, uh, you know, in, in that sense, we've been really lucky. Our yeah. customers have always understood that you know, sometimes things are out of our control. Um, but yes, it's, uh, it is something you definitely need to take into consideration when, when yeah. you start planning yeah. uh, to where you would like to. And something like construction too. I mean, that's totally out of your control, right? How yeah. could you plan for something like that Absolutely. or mitigate it? Um, last night I was just YouTubing like float tanks, float, whatever, just to get my mind in that frame. Um, and I watched a short documentary, uh, it was called Tanks for the Memories, and it was by a guy, he's a reporter for Vice, and um, normally his episodes are, he's, he's a pharmacologist, okay. and normally his episodes are him going to different parts of the world and trying like local drugs and things. So it was interesting that he decided to do an episode on flotation, yeah. because he sort of saw it as a perspective-altering substance in a way. But he did... Um, I think all of his floats, he did some kind of marijuana, whether it was smoking or, or taking an edible or something okay. beforehand. Yep. And watching that, I was thinking I would never do that unless I was a very seasoned edible eater and floater and at the floater. same same time. Yeah. Has that ever been something that you've experimented with, like going in? Um, I have, I have personally not, but I have had, um, I have had some people that that. Uh, I subsequently found out um, because we do actually um, state that you should not be under the influence of any any type of uh, narcotic or alcohol when you come in for a float, um, obviously for you know, safety purposes. Um, having said that, I absolutely, obviously have no control over what you do before you walk in here and if you don't appear to be, you know, uh, or let me rephrase that, if you appear to be completely normal, there's absolutely nothing I will do to stop you from doing that. Um, having said that, I have had con uh, discussions with people consequently, and you know, uh, and one person specifically has said to me, "Yes, they they do have uh, edible. They 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 definitely partake of an edible before they come and have a float." Um, and they've said to me, "Yes, there there is a definite noticeable difference when they do and don't before the float." Um, and so the uh, I I did not get the impression that it was that. Um, you would experience any type of hallucination or visions or colors or anything to that effect. I think it just makes the the meditation aspect of it, I suppose, the relaxation part of it makes it easier to get into, um, and uh, it makes it a, it's a deeper relaxation. Uh, but yes, I t I completely agree with you. I I think you need to be a a seasoned user um, and and. A reasonably seasoned floater. Yeah. Um, I just for the, the sheer reason you do not want to have uh, any type of. I suppose that's true in any part of life, but you know you don't really want to have any type of negative connotation to your experience. Um, yeah, it, it's it, it's 
personally, I honestly cannot see any reason why that should not be something that that we could do, um, or that you know, as um, I don't know how to say this. Um, I guess it totally depends on the person, right? Exactly. Yes, I, I, you know, I, I truly believe that. I mean, I'm put it this way. I'm really pleased that that cannabis is being legalized uh, eventually. Uh, it's. I believe there are some phenomenal health benefits to it, um, and I, I definitely believe that the uh, mental aspects of of uh, controlled being the operative word use. Yeah. Um, and when I say controlled, I don't mean government controlled. I mean, you know, controlled by yourself personally. Uh, I, I think it's a it's a really good tool to help in, in many uh, different, uh, in many different ways. Yeah. Um, and I think one of them, uh, I, I think it, it, it will complement. I, I think floating would be a very nice complementary uh, therapy to it i suppose yeah um but yes i i i really think it's uh as two complementary therapies they they, they yeah. do they do work quite well it seems like um just like getting out of the float tank and like reflecting and like writing on your experience or having a cup of tea or something is complementary to it absolutely yeah. maybe having a little bit of a weed cookie or something beforehand yeah. would be complementary correct as well yeah um but yeah. once again, venture with caution. <laughs> absolutely, that's that's the, the that's the big takeout away yeah. from this. I would th- I would suggest is absolutely yeah, venture with caution. Yeah. yeah. What's the like the main demographic that you get here? Oh, incredibly diverse. Yeah. Uh, literally, our I think our youngest floater that floated by himself, so not as a shared in the, in our couples unit, was twelve. Um, and yes, we have, we have several people floating that are uh, deep seventies, eighties, uh, male, female, various different, uh, uh, well, yeah, completely as I was going to say various different age groups, but yes, it's, yeah. uh, you know, virtually, I suppose if I had to pick a, a more common demographic it would probably be ladies in the sort of mid 30s to mid 50s maybe yeah um but even having said that we have it it would it would be a very close call it would be really difficult to call yeah. it uh, we 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 have right you know, during the day we tend to have more uh, people that are either you know Either retired or, you know, uh, for some reason not working, um, housewives, etc. Um, whereas in the evening we send, we, we tend to see more um, youngsters. Apparently, uh, funny enough, uh, they they tend to sort of pop out of the woodwork mm. <laughs> come evening time. Yeah. Um, weekends are completely variable uh, yeah. and completely unpredictable. Having said that, as well, uh, one thing I have learned with running a business in the greater Vancouver area. Um, and this is by no means derogatory because I do the same thing. We are very last minute. We, we do like to not necessarily leave things till the last minute, but we do like to decide that we'd like to go and do something now. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> lots of time, uh, lots of indoor activities here with the weather, right? Absolutely. Yes. Um, I was just wondering what is going through a twelve-year-old's brain when he's <laughs> floating yep. around in that little system. So this this was a, a lad that has had a, does that he's had a bit of personal problems. Um, so it was it was a combination of trying to see if flotation would help for his physical um, problems that he was having, um, but the physical problems were causing some mental instabilities. So you know it, yeah. it was. Uh, so they, the, he floated with uh, his mother two or three times in the couple's unit um, and basically then decided, look, he would like to try this himself. Um, yeah, and it was it was a, a really, it was good. Yeah. I'd never thought about that before, but that's probably a good coupling too to have some sort of like troubled youth program or just 
I guess any anyone can benefit from con- like solo contemplation in this kind of environment. Yeah. But I mean, it seems like uh, maybe someone who is in physical or mental distress of any kind could benefit from this. Like if there was a program in the community, it'd be a great pairing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I uh, the the amount of research regarding flotation therapies. Uh, is increasing. People are spending a bit more time and, and it is becoming slowly but surely becoming a little bit more mainstream. So there's a bit more research being done on, on an ongoing basis. And it really has shown to have really, to be really beneficial for ADHD, um, ADD, uh, basically any of those, uh, I don't know what you call them, conditions, I suppose. Um, so yes, there is definitely research that shows that this helps. And I mean, if you basic, if you just have to think through it logically, it it makes sense that it it would help. Yeah. Um. Uh, but yes, there's been a lot of research regarding the mind uh, when it comes to floating. Uh, things not just just not just in the relaxation part of it, but also in uh, helping people, uh, helping memory and retention. Um, it's there's a program uh, running in in uh, one of the countries in Europe um, where they are doing a control group and you know, a test group um, for pilots. Yeah. And the the group that's floating has a as much high scores in the practical application of their work in the actual flying and in the actual retention and memory. Uh, yeah retaining and, and uh, releasing information again because we can all we can all we all have information inside ourselves uh, very very little of what we ever see or hear is completely lost um, I like to use an example where I ask somebody you know can you remember obviously I'm not going to ask a 16 year old this but can you remember what you did for your 16th birthday and most adults would say not a clue uh, but yet, if I took out a photograph of you on your 16th birthday, you would remember. So the information is there. Yeah, uh, it's just a matter of trying to get to the information, and this is part of what flotation is is helping with. It makes the access to the information easier. Yeah, it's almost like your brain, because it's devoid of stimulus, it's able to walk through the hallways of your memory and sort of unlock those doors that you hadn't really. It's thought absolute, of in a while. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. That's it. You know, uh, life gets in the way of living, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, it's, it's weird you know, that way. <laughs> it is, absolutely. We are so busy making plans the whole day, every day, that, you know, you get to the end of the day and you go, goodness, where did that go? Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it, it does definitely help to concentrate, uh, well, obviously, uh, concentrate our minds, but concentrate our minds to the fact that we we have to... We have to live a little bit in between doing all the rest of what we do, and um, the 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 meditative side or the relaxation side of the the flotation really does help to to at least point you in the direction that uh, yeah maybe I should take a little bit of time out for myself on the odd occasion yeah um, because there are some really good measurable benefits afterwards yeah. Um, one other thing I just have to mention is flotation therapy can help as a one-off, but it is like most of anything out there that is good for you. It is something you need to practice and it is something you need to continue doing. You don't need to do it on a daily basis or even a weekly basis, but you really should schedule some time on a, on a reasonably regular basis just to go and get away from from the distractions of day-to-day life. And as I said, the, the, you know, some of the, the other effects obviously would be the fact that you're going to sleep better because of the magnesium and all the other effects that, that are associated with the, the the physical part of the flotation. Yeah. So, yeah, that is... that is uh, uh, Even though we've had many uh, compliments on... Or, you know, I, it's not really a compliment because it's not us doing anything, but uh, we've had comments with people who have suffered from back problems and, and pain for literally years where one float has given them relief. Um, 
But that one vote having given them relief, if they never come back within a, a week or two or a month or whatever, the, the pain will return because our bodies will return to the way they used to operate. And if we continue to abuse them in the same way, we're going to come back and have the same problems. Yeah, so. I'd imagine some, like an elderly person who's walking around with the aches and pains that come with age, um, being in the tank and being almost essentially weightless would be a miraculous experience, it, right? Yeah. Oh, it is. Um, it is. I I really would like so much to 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 make older people. And yes, it is. It is valid for anybody all the way through your life. But definitely, when you when you start getting to the point in your life where where you are starting to experience joint problems, um, you know, muscular pains for no reason, um, just basically age just creeps up on all of us. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, flotation is probably one of the best things, or floating is probably one of the best things you can do for your body. Just because of the fact that you're taking so much stress off, off the physical um, joints in your body, you know, it, from the day we're born, there's one overriding factor in our lives. We are sus susceptible to, or, you know, we're under the effect of one g worth of gravity, and it doesn't mat matter what you do, unless you're floating in water. Um, so un unless you're good at floating and can actually float in a swimming pool or something, yeah. that'll give you a, a similar, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll do a similar thing um, for your body in the sense of being weightless. Um, you won't get the, the other advantages, obviously because of the fact that you have to concentrate on staying on top of the water and you know, all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the point I'm trying to make is so from the day we're born, we are, we are under the power of one of gravity, dragging, you know, our joints against each other, grinding bone against bone as you know tissue starts wearing out. Yeah. Um, and there's unfortunately no way around that. Floating is a way around that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it it helps. Yeah, I'm sure a lot more people have gone swimming um, compared to floating. And every time I go for a swim afterwards, I feel amazing. Like you Absolutely. feel refreshed. The water is nice. Like even just floating around and then going for a float in a tank is like next level right absolutely yeah the times i've done it I, I come out of it and i describe it to people as that feeling you get after you've had the best nap you've ever had like you just feel really refreshed and yeah. it's the world is bright and like colorful and i the, the last float i did do i came out feeling that and i was in the middle of downtown toronto and i walked out and just to see all the stimulus i just kind of laughed at everything that was happening, happening yeah and then I got on a streetcar, went to a party, and got drunk. So, <laughs> well, there you go. I didn't get the, the good night's sleep or the <laughs> follow-up effects. But. Well, at at the very least, that would have helped you a little bit the next day. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it is. Uh, it is a comment we get quite often when people come up going, "That was really good." Oh, that was. It was nice not to have to you know, listen to my phone or have to be worried about um, mostly phones. It's it's the phones. People yeah. people are just on their phones the whole time. Um, it's interesting the the, the younger generation, um, even though they are aware that that we require them to turn their phones off. It's you know, one of the very last things we remind people to do. Just, you know, as we leave the room, is just please remember to turn off your phone. And so you can sometimes see that this is, uh, this is quite, a, quite an intense <laughs> thing to have to turn your phone off completely. What do you mean? I can't even have it on silent? No, I really recommend you turn it off completely. Because yeah. the light coming on, you know, people notice it. You, you, because there's nothing else. There's absolutely yeah. no other stimulus. So, yes. They, um, but that just, that, that's just... It just brings it home how plugged in we are to everything. Uh, you know, we, we just we, we get very nervous if you know somebody might send me a text. Uh, I, I might not see it for an hour. Yeah, uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm always curious. Um, this is not really about floating, but uh, I don't know how old you are, but I I can tell by looking at you that you're wiser than I am. Um, 
What was yes, it? I have sub- I have substantially less hair. <laughs> <laughs> For those not watching the yes, video, exactly. <laughs> um, there is no video, by the way. Um, what was it like to transition from? I mean, I'm sure you have a smartphone. I can see it on yep. the table there. What was it like to transition from a world without instant communication to everybody and instant contact to this hyper connection that we have now? I still find it tricky. Yeah. I, uh, I obviously on, on the business side of things, I've, I've grown used to the fact that people expect answers immediately. Um, but I struggled for years with, uh, you know, if somebody sends me an email, um, and expects a, a reply in the next 10 minutes. I, I, I don't believe it's a, it's a good thing. <laughs> you know, it, I can understand how it works and why it would work. And, and I, you know, understand, uh, you know, technology definitely does make our lives easier. Um, but by the same token, it is putting us under permanent time pressure. Uh, 20 years ago, if you wanted something, you know, you either telephoned the person um, and you could get a sense of what was going on because of the, you know, either the tone of voice or, you know, um, emails I find basically you can send an email to somebody and you actually don't really know what goes on on the other side. You know, you will get a reply, um, but it's completely soulless. Yeah. Um, and also so it's, what I wanted to say is people also... People want replies and they want things done immediately. Unfortunately, you know, if you send me a, a request or something, you are not the only person doing that. There might be 2,000 other people sending requests. But you, as the person sending the request, expects a reply back immediately because I sent you the question. Why are you not answering me? Yeah. Um, that part of, of it, I, I, I still struggle with. I, yeah. I, I really do. I, you know, when it comes to text messages, I literally, I will send a text. If you send a text back to me, I might send one more text, but odds are I will probably phone you. Yeah. Um, I, I still prefer some sort of uh, real-time conversation with a person on the other end. I'm quite happy using chat on, on you know, if, if you're on a PC or on your laptop or whatever, having, as long as it's real-time with somebody that you could actually get an answer from. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, for the rest of it, the, what you can do with the technology and all the rest of it, I, I love it. I, uh, I used to be a really early adopter of technologies. Um, I've slowed down a bit as I've got older. Um, I just find it, it becomes, it becomes a lot to learn, um, to keep right up on the forefront. So I've, I'm not there anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I, oh, it's, I don't feel like I'm there anymore. Yeah, like it's going so fast, right? And yeah, I have my phone, and then a new one comes out, and I'm like, this one's still good. Still like, good. <laughs> it still does. Still good. Like, yeah, it'll even make a phone call if you really need it to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, I. You know, the technology and the the, the rate of what of of our lives. You know, the, the rate at which we living our lives is. It's a little bit scary. Yeah. Um, I being in this industry has 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 actually brought it more to the forefront for me. Yeah, like it, 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 I notice more how little time we have for ourselves. Uh, we are literally just all. Everybody seems to be either working well, working either at their jobs or or working at their social lives. Um, it's all work. It's all work. Yeah. yeah. It's it's, you know, you you get a text and and it's, or a Facebook message or something like, oh, well, you know, you want to come over over for lunch on Saturday. That used to be the end of the conversation. Yes, great. See you on Saturday. Yeah. Now it becomes well, you know, who's going to bring what and who, well, th- that's I mean that's obviously we still used to do that sort of thing, but it 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 becomes a much bigger thing, you know. Yeah. It, it now becomes like, oh, we have to get people involved and you have to have back and forward texts and messages and Facebooks and uh, emails and all the rest of it. Yeah. And then come Saturday uh, at one o'clock, you start getting emails and messages going, oh, goodness, actually, I can't make it. I'm, I, I, I'm still in, you know, New West and I'm supposed to be meeting you guys in Squamish or whatever the case may be, you know, life, yeah. life just seems to be reactive. 
at yeah. the moment. Um, yeah, it's also that um, people talk about FOMO, like the fear of missing out, right? Absolutely. So if it's Tuesday and someone's like, do you want to go out on the weekend? Like, You're like, uh, well, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Something better might come up, so I want to keep my options open, right? That's true, yes. But I love to think about um, pre-cell phone days. I experienced a little bit when I was a kid, right? But yeah. uh, I love thinking about going to meet someone in a crowded place. Because now with texting, you can be like, oh, I'm over by the Orange Julius or something, right? That was the first thing I used my cell phone for. That is the reason I bought my first cell phone, is meeting. going and meeting people at places and you don't know where they are. And I, yeah. thought, I thought this was just the best thing ever. I mean, really? You can, I can phone you and you can say, look, I'm over here, as you say, <laughs> under the Orange Julius sign. Great. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, a couple of days ago, I have Google Maps on my phone, and I'm constantly longing for this pre-smartphone era. So I deleted Google Maps off my phone, and I'm like, I'm going to see what happens. And then yesterday, I got off work, and I had to pick up my girlfriend at her work. And I know how to get there, but I instant instinctively picked up my phone to look at Google Maps to see like the fastest way, like the most maybe there was traffic, traffic or something, or something yep. so I went to look and I was like oh no <laughs> <laughs> so I started driving and I was like I know how to get there and then I realized that I was fine with the way I was driving because I didn't know there was a better option Yeah. so I was like yeah great yeah that's it it's yeah. uh I I mean, I think we you know, a lot of us have some sort of sat nav running when we drive now. Either it's your phone, you have Google Maps, or you have a Garmin on your car, or you have sat nav you know, built in in your vehicle. Um, and yes, I've I've noticed that if I even if I'm doing a trip that I do regularly, if I have that on for some reason, I keep looking at it. I, mean, I know I'm turning in 200 yards, but I've got to have a look and say, oh yes, it says I'm turning in 200 yards. So yes, we agree. Yeah. yeah it is. It's, it's, it's quite a strange. I think it comes phenomena. back. It, it comes back to that like whole work productivity thing, because you want to confirm that you're turning in 200 yards, because if you make a mistake, you're wasting time. time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you want to be the most time efficient. Yeah, that is, I think that is true. Yeah. Um, because I mean, yeah, we are more, all of us are living under much more, much bigger time constraints than we did in, yeah. in the past. Absolutely. I feel yeah. like there's a need to now to be productive, even when you're, you're on your downtime. It's like if you're not doing something, yeah, then you're useless. Like yes. you should be doing oh, something. Oh, absolutely. No, there is the, 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 there is definitely a, a growing mindset and it's, and it's being reinforced by, by society. Absolutely. That, Doing nothing is a bad thing. You know, it's, as you say, being unproductive, it means either you're lazy or you're useless or, you know, I don't know, some sort of negative connotation. Whereas we really, really need to have some time to literally sit and do nothing. You know, the, the, first of all, I, I personally do not believe you can do nothing. It is not possible. You, if I'm sitting and, and relaxing, I'm sitting and relaxing. I'm not doing nothing. I'm actually doing something that is beneficial for me. Um, and I, I think that's, that's where the problems come in. When, if you aren't seen to be doing something physical and productive, etc., it, it, as I say, it, it, it's perceived as a negative. Um, and I think that is, that creates more problems. Um, because we do absolutely need downtime. We absolutely yeah. have to have it. And if we don't, and if we deny that to ourselves, we're going to start running into into trouble. We we yeah. really are. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. It reminds me of just you get into trouble when you've got too many apps and programs running in the background of your mind, right? Absolutely. You're not closing stuff. You're not clearing things out. Correct. To use a technology analogy, yeah, analogy to go with yeah, our absolutely. conversation. Yeah. No, that is that is that is so true. We are we are all. Yeah, we're all busy doing multitasking. Oh my goodness! Yes, it's uh, it was. It's one of those words that really meant, a, you know, was a good thing when the word, the the phrase was coined to multitask. Um, but you know, when we started multitasking, multitasking would mean doing maybe two or three things. No. Now, multitasking now means to do everything 
at the same time, you know, and that could literally be 20 different things. And you, you're trying to cope with all of them at the same time. And when you're 20 years old and your mind is fresh and everything is fine, yes, you can, you can probably still do it. Um, by the time you get to your thirties, you're still really young, but your mind is starting to take a bit of strain, you know, um, it, and it just keeps going, you know, forties, you know, nowadays, you know, 40 year old is, is a young person. It's, it's by no, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, by the time you got to 40 or 45, you were, Considered to be quite an old person, <laughs> you know. Nowadays, you're not. You're absolutely you're in the prime of your life. Yeah. Um, but your brain doesn't function the same anymore. It it becomes more difficult for you to to recollect things. It becomes more difficult to keep, you know, all the balls in the air, so to speak, at the same time. Um, and if you've if you've never learned to put some of them down, that's where you start running into trouble. Then you literally start dropping the ball. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's true. Um, so how did you get into all this float tank stuff? Did you, did you have a float yourself or what's the origin uh, story? It's, uh, it's very interesting. My background is very different. I, 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 uh, before I got involved, uh, in the, the healing type industry, um, I was in the casino industry. I, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Very, very different. <laughs> but having said that, I, uh, I left the casino industry probably 15 years ago now. 14 years ago, something to that effect. Um, so I, I basically retired from being a casino manager. Um, but I've always been interested in, alt, let's call it alternative health or non-Western medicine health. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've had a look at various different opportunities over the years and various different therapies over the years. Um, I'm, I, I qualified myself as a... a I, I, I'm not allowed to say massage therapist because you have to do your training in Canada to be able to call yourself a massage therapist. But I qualified in a different country, but you know, same same qualifications. Uh, I did that basically shortly after I left the casino industry, um, and I've I've never practiced as a, a, a therapist. Um, having said that, I've I've probably done more hours massaging than a lot of them have. Yeah. Just friends, family, and all the rest of it. Um, so I, I have a, an, an interest in in holistic healing, or as I said, non non Western medicated healing. Um, and yes, I I I basically discovered uh, flotation again. Also, uh, Joe Rogan. Um, somebody had mentioned something, and you know, yeah, I I, I you know, sort of started pulling on the thread and. Yeah, eventually found out that you know, they existed um, in in the, the, the lower mainland area. This specific spa was was one of the very first ones that opened. Um, it wasn't me that opened it; the previous owner um, opened it. Um, but yes, so I when I when I discovered that it, it, it you know, such a thing existed, um, I did it obviously did did some research into it and it. it 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 was definitely in the line of what I wanted to do. Uh, I try very hard to um, target, I suppose. Might not be the right word, but I I really want to make people aware of the fact that there is a real physical benefit to floating. Um, I, f I find that the type of person I need to convince that there is a real mental benefit to floating tend to be more open to floating anyway. Um, so I, I find that those are more than often the type of customers we would attract. Um, so, but I, obviously I have, you know, made sure that we, we, we keep that side of it very much in the forefront. But I have been trying really hard to try and get people to understand that this is a, a genuine um, therapy to make you to enhance your life. You know, yeah. to, it, it really does. It, you know, it physically and and mentally. It, you, I've I've never heard a customer come out of a float and go, "Oh my god, that was terrible." Yeah, you know, it just doesn't happen. No, <laughs> you know, it, even people who have who suffer from claustrophobia, um, 
on we've had a reasonable amount of people because of the, the fact that we have that open unit that that you know say okay well yeah okay I'll, I'll give it a try and they've been in and they've had all the lights on and the, the lid open and all the rest of it and by the time they've done two or three sessions well let's call that three or four sessions they got to the point where they can turn the lights off in there they're actually experiencing the exact same um they're gaining the exact same experience as if they were in a fully enclosed unit but their mind is happy because of the fact that they don't have anything over that and and it's it as we all know phobias are all obviously they they're all just in your mind having said that they're completely real to you um, and this is you know that that is the way it is yeah um but yes people do do get to the point where yes even, even as i said even people who have uh, who do really suffer from from you know being in enclosed spaces can get to the point where they get the benefit of yeah. floating yeah that's good um the open face concept um when i did mine i was like going gung ho on the enclosed one Absolutely, right away yeah. what uh I noticed that I watched a video of Rogan's tank, and yep. he's got one that appears to be stand up. Like you step in, it is a full size door, and you stand into it. How does that work? Does the whole thing fill up with water? No. So basically, the bit that we can see from his tank, yeah. uh, the doorway, that just steps into a a room basically, and, then it's and just the, the, the floor. Yeah. The, so the, ah, basically, okay. the bottom. So you'd be stepping into a tank. Ah, okay. Um, yes, it's it's one of the new designs. The the they designed to basically look like you're just walking into a room, mm-hmm. um, and then the the entire basin of the room is is yeah. basically the tank. Um, for people who don't know, too, the water gets filtered, obviously. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, so I can I can just uh, speak to that for for a second. Um, we do not, so the water does not get changed after every person uses it. Um, the way I try to explain it to people is try and think of it as a cross between a swimming pool and a hot tub, um, a salt water swimming pool and a hot tub. So the, the, the water gets filtered, the pumps run after every single, uh, floater, obviously. Um, and they run for, uh, on 20 minute cycles and they would run, um, we also run them obviously right throughout the evenings. They run through a micron filter, um, so anything down to a micron gets filtered out. So absolutely no solids get through whatsoever, no skin cells. Um, we also treat the water with a chemical, which we are required to do after every single floater. Uh, we use bromine or bromine, uh, which is similar to chlorine, uh, just it's not as harsh, um, and we are required to do that. Um, by by health and safety or uh, Fraser Health, I believe they are. Um, we're quite happy to do that, obviously, because we want to be in compliance with with all the health and safety checks. Uh, having said that, the sheer amount of salt that you're in basically takes care of virtually anything you could possibly think of. Yeah. Um, we also use a uh, all up. We, we try and be as chemical free as we can in the, in the spa. So we try and use, um, well, not we try, we do use vinegar as a cleaning agent. Um, and we will use very, very small amounts of bleach in, in areas where it is required. Um, and that's basically nearly the total amount of chemicals that we use yeah. in the spa. Um, just because, as I said, we want to try and be as chemical free as possible. So yes, we do. We do make use of of physical filtration systems. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, these systems have been tested um, very, very well. Um, yeah. And just just for a little bit of information as well, even though the fact that uh, flotation therapy in in Canada is quite a new thing, it has uh, it, it is in existence and it has existence existed in Europe for many many years um and it's existed in its current form uh, since uh, probably I, I believe it was early 70s that the, the the units as we understand them today started being developed um there was some research done in the 50s with is, regards to flotation is that john c lily that's it yeah yeah so exactly so that, that there's it's been around for for a reasonable time yeah um, 
um, so the, that's just on the therapy side. Now on on the actual um, the practical side, with that was as I said, basically from the seventies when they started developing uh, commercial uh, units. One of the first things they started looking at, obviously, filtration systems. Yeah, um, and they've been developed to such an extent that yeah, we we quite happy to run through uh, the filtration systems. We do have uh, checks and in place um, to obviously make sure that that you know, nothing goes wrong. Yeah, um, if there's a uh, the water gets tested uh, very regularly. Um, we do a full test on 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 everything every day, yeah. Um, and then we do a uh, what we call a deep clean. So basically, pull everything apart once a week, um, make sure everything's you know yeah. completely you know, sparkling clean and, and yeah. all the rest of it. Because yeah, uh, you know, the nature of the business being obviously you. You really, it's not something you could take it no. any type of risk with. No, of the floats that I've done, I didn't even think about the cleanliness of it because it was so clean. It wasn't until after that someone was like, oh, like that's gross, like bath water yeah. <laughs> from the well, city. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yep, uh, no, it's, you even yeah. encourage people to shower before and after. Oh, absolutely. It is part of our, it is, it is part of our process. Uh, you know, we, we require that you have a shower before and um, to make sure that, you know, no body oils or hair. It's mostly hair products. Um, you know, our hair is very oily. Uh, even we might not be able to feel, you know, feel it. But uh, so yes, we we require everybody to have a shower and hair wash before they go into the unit. Make sure that no oil products get into the unit. Obviously, make sure that you know, there's you know, as little um, contamination going into the unit as yeah. humanly possible. Um, and then yeah, we. We also really highly recommend you have a shower afterwards because you don't want to be going around with all that salt. Yeah, it just dries up, right? It does, yeah. Oh, yeah, you just turn into a snowman in about five minutes. You yeah. You just go completely white. Yeah, I've swam in, like, um, the Atlantic and, and Pacific and stuff, and you come out after a while, you can feel it on your skin, skin and yeah. it's only exaggerated when you come out of the tank. Right? Oh, yes, very much so. Um are there any like float conferences or anything in this area happening? Nothing. There's nothing in Canada as really? uh, up to this point. The closest, well, the, the, there's a, a big float conference every year in San Diego, um, and I believe that's that's the only big one out in North America. Um, I I'm thinking I would probably like to uh, next year at the at the I forget what the show is called. It's just been. Um, there must be like spa conference. Yeah, or exactly. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's basically about you know uh, healing and and spas and uh, you know, all that sort of thing. Um, try and get out and get you know a bit more educated. Uh, you know, yeah. Try and educate a few more people. Yeah. Um, but yes, it's uh, it is it is quite it it is still a very very new. Uh, industry it's weird for me because it seems like um it's it doesn't seem that new to me because i've been hearing about it for years right now in podcasts and stuff but i still find myself having to explain what it is even just coming to do this podcast i had to explain who you were and what it was and get into the benefits of it and like all that it's kind of like this hidden subculture of the therapeutic industry in a way absolutely um I lived out, I lived out in St. John's for a while, and there's I don't, there's none in Newfoundland. I was I was about to say, yeah. uh, you know, one of the the great things about being on the west coast is the you know Vancouver specifically, um, but the entire west coast, basically from Seattle all the way up here, yeah, uh, they they seem to be a lot more open to, let's call it alternate, you know, alternate therapies. Yeah. Um, which uh, yeah, it's I I am I'm, I'm actually not surprised to hear you say that that there wasn't uh, yeah. a unit out in the east. Even in Toronto, when I was there, major metropolis, like there was only two, I think yeah. maybe two or three, um, which was surprising. There's the one over top of the subway, yeah. and then there's <laughs> the good one. <laughs> there's some, there's some better ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, with with the whole West Coast, Oregon, and like BC, and yeah. all the way down. There's just something about the West Coast that's far more progressive in terms of physical health, mental health, alternative yeah. medicines, and 
floating goes right along with all that stuff. It most certainly does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I'm, you know, it's, it's brilliant to have the opportunity to, to, you know, showcase to people what, what something that they never thought of before could do for them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it really is. And, uh, yeah, we we do have customers that come in and literally do it once, and you you don't see them again, and that's absolutely fine. You know, they had a great experience, and it's just not a therapy for them. It was just for the experience, um, and as I said, that's absolutely fine. Uh, and then we have the, the regular customer base who come because of of the fact that they might have, you know, backache or leg problem or you know arthritis or insomnia any of those sort of things uh, fibromyalgia is something we deal with quite often mm. um, it seems to be on the increase the the incidences of fibromyalgia um, can you tell me what that is so fibromyalgia is an autoimmune disease um, and um, it's been connected to uh, um, it is definitely stress related um, stress makes it so much worse and, and basically what it is is, is your skin is just re- really really sensitive um, to the extent that it's painful um, yeah. and it's so painful to touch to pressure anything to that effect and um, so the reason that the floating would help for that is the fact that that you can relax you can basically get rid of a lot of the stress um, and that's a, a big part of what triggers it yeah um, and apparently it's it's basically connected to the capillaries uh, in in you know under the skin um and to you know the hands and all sorts so it's a um it is it is a, a, a very uncomfortable um condition to have i've i've heard about it so many times probably through like commercials on tv trying to sell some cream or something you know very possible yes and uh yeah, I never actually fully thought it through what it actually was, but my God, that sounds horrible. Yes, it, yeah. yeah. It's, Especially uh, in this stress-inducing environment we live in, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, one of the one of the other stress-inducing uh, or stress-induced um, complaints, uh, issues that we get are people that suffer from eczema or psoriasis, any of those sorts of things now. I'll just say straight off the top, I do not recommend that you come and float if you have psoriasis or eczema for the simple reason that it is, uh, it's, it's basically similar to a cut or a scrape or anything like that. The, the amount of salt that you're going to be in is going to be painful. It, there's no, there's no maybe about it. It's not going to be mildly uncomfortable. It is going to be painful. Yeah. Um, having said that, we do have, on the odd occasion, we've had somebody who has had very mild psoriasis um, basically just stick it out because it really does help. Mm. It, 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 it really does have um, quite major benefits. Yeah. But, yeah, it's... <laughs> I, me, personally, no, thank you. I just don't think I could actually handle it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so Maybe you get to a certain pain threshold where you do start to hallucinate. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the endorphins take over. <laughs> must, you know, something must happen. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, I, I like to say to people, you know, if if it's... Regardless of the fact that you know, it's something you might want to try or anything, you know, it, we all like to try new things. And, yes, I obviously I recommend anybody try something new. Um, just for the you know if it's something that you think you might be able to get any benefits from yes absolutely by all means try it yeah Um, even just come in for the one off absolutely yes absolutely even if you don't get quite into the mental space like you said there's many uh, physical benefits to it as well yes uh, you know uh, if if uh, yeah even if you literally just come in for the actual relaxation and rest part of it um one of the things that happens when you're in the unit and you actually do start relaxing your your brain changes it actually changes the physical state of your brain um so as we're aware we have alpha waves beta waves etc now you get down to a state uh of theta waves now that is the state that your brain is in just before you fall asleep yeah 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 now this recreates the theta state in your brain waves. So yeah. even though the fact that you're not asleep, you're you you are gaining the same advantages. Your brain is gaining the same advantages as if it was asleep. Yeah. Um, 
once again, many people do fall asleep. Yeah, it's uh, very comfortable. Yes, yeah. it is. And it's very surprising to first-time floaters, you know, when you say that to them. It's like, oh, never. No, I could never do that. Oh, okay. Half an hour later, you can hear them yeah. <laughs> not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, when it, people ask me how it feels, like, you, you nailed it right there, that between state when you're not quite awake, you're not quite asleep. And then you only realize, well, I only realize I'm in that state when the session ends Ends. and I hear like the music come on or the bell or whatever happens. Yeah. And then you're kind of snapped out of it. And then I remember too, on the last one, I felt as though, um, and I saw this quite a bit in the footage I was watching last night, people say they felt, felt like they're being born, like the way they're coming out of the the unit, (laughs) coming out of the unit and you step, everything's brighter and yeah. You feel refreshed and it's an odd sensation. It is. Yeah. It is. It's, I've, I've tried to explain this to people probably thousands of times. And most people who I've explained this to and, and that have come for a float, when they've come out, they've said to me, what you said was absolutely true, but I understand what you mean now when you say you can't explain it. Yeah. Because what you said, yes, that did happen, but it's, it's not quite the way you said it. You know, it's, yeah. it, it, it defies, you know, the, you cannot explain it in words. I, well, I don't know. Maybe it's just the English language doesn't have the words. But yeah, I, yeah, I, it's just, a feeling. It is a feeling. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like yeah. trying to describe love or trying to, I suppose, describe so. a taste, taste of something. Of something right? yeah. yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and it's different for everybody too. Right? It is. So. It is. And your sessions tend to be different as well. You know, it depends on what sort of energy you come in with. Are you, you know, really agitated that day? Are you, you know, have you had just had a fight with you know, your partner or have you had a bad day at work or is it the complete opposite? Have you had a really good day? Have you had some good news? Have you just had a relaxing day? Um, and virtually anywhere in between. And that will all affect the, it'll all affect your float. Um, yeah. Because such a big part of it is mental um if you if you can't get to the point where you can relax enough for for your brain to to start shutting down a little bit your body will follow suit and it also won't will not relax yeah to the same extent it seems like um what people talk about when they're uh, promoting uh safe drug use set and setting Right? Yeah, absolutely. You come into the tank with aggression, and yeah. you, you're going to be focused on that, and you're not going to be able to relax. You're not going to be able to relax or anything. Vice yeah. versa. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very much, very much, set and setting. And then you guys are putting the setting. It's you walk into any float place, and it's fairly calm, and yeah. like it's a spa. You feel like you can relax. You can yeah. let your hair down, and then even. Um, just being in the darkness, even the water feels velvety. Like everything about it, the tactile experience yes. is very. It's calm. it's it's a it's it's one of those disconnects uh, when you obviously when we do our uh, introduction into the units. One of the, the things that we really take care to explain is how incredibly slippery the water is. Yeah, uh, it's it, people just. I I would never have thought that either. You know, uh, uh, if if I wasn't told the first time because it it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily equate, you know, salt in water. Didn't, no salt that I've ever put in water has made the water slippery. Mm. Um, but yes, it is. It becomes. It it becomes as slippery as any type of mineral oil or anything. Yeah. As soon as it touches the surface, and and yes, as you said, the feeling of the water, if you just rub it in between your fingers, it it definitely, it doesn't feel like water. It no. it feels thicker. It feels yeah. velvety. That's actually quite a nice yeah. uh, way to put it. And I feel too when you're laying there for quite a while, and then you go to come up out of it, it almost feels like you're draped in it, like it's draping away from you. Yes, sort of. Yes, yeah, yes. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't run quite the same way that water does. No, it's, uh, it's magic, magic <laughs> liquid. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. is. Yeah. It it uh, it really, uh, as it says, it does as it says on the on the bottle. Uh, it, it really, basically, as far as I'm concerned, you know, the only thing I can't fix with flotation therapy is if you break a leg or something. You know, I suggest <laughs> yeah. you go and see your doctor. Yeah. But I can definitely help you fix you with your therapy afterwards. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it is. I, you know, if I can just 
you know, get you know, whoever's listening to this podcast, you know, do yourself a favor. You know, you don't have to come to my clothes bar, but do yourself a favor and at some point, sooner the better, try and get yourself in and try and go and to go and experience this. It is it is a very unique experience. Um, it's um, it I completely understand it's it is a little bit out there. Um, you know, it, people you know, it, it it is an alternative therapy. Um, but you know, it's all you're going to be doing is just lying in a pool of water. That's basically the extent of what you need to yeah. that that's your activity in this in in this part of it. The rest of it, yeah. you know, We'll we'll take care of it. You know, the, the water will do it. There, that just doing the activity will get you the benefit. Yeah. So yes, I I really highly recommend it to anybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's a good spot to wrap it up. It's a good directive and a good uh, good mission statement. Go have a float. And uh, if people want to come to your place, uh, where can they find you? Absolutely. So we are situated in Coquitlam on the corner of uh, Lansdowne and Guildford. Um, the name of the spa, we are called uh, Cloud Nine Float Spa, and we can be contacted uh, telephonically uh, at 778 uh, 8090902. Um, and obviously, uh, our website, cloud9floatspa.com, um, and uh, webpay. Uh, and Facebook page, I highly recommend uh, anybody um, before they go for a float, once again, anywhere, not necessarily here, um, do a little bit of research. It's it's in your own interest. Um, we have masses of information on our Facebook page. You know, there are eight sections in on the web page that deal specifically with first-time floaters and information that they require. Um, so, yeah, basically... Um, uh, I would recommend this uh, to anybody, not necessary for floating. You know, do a little bit of homework before you get involved in in in, in any of this. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, literally, you know, pardon the pun, but take the plunge. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Had to throw a floating plunge in there. there floating pun. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, John. Uh, you're more than welcome. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, Jordan. <laughs> So this is my float report, the one uh, that I did most recently, compliments of Cloud9. It was pretty cool. I haven't done one in a little while. So um, at first I go into the tank and I'm just getting reacquainted with the whole situation. You step in and it's quite uh, slippery in there. So you cautiously sit down and then the lights go out. You pull the door closed and... I don't know, I'm not claustrophobic, but every time I pull the door closed, I get a little bit hesitant. I worry about maybe the guy at the front desk is going to fall asleep and forget about me, or which never happens. But tiny moments of like paranoia, just like that, kind of set in. And then you start to relax, and the first thing that always comes about, and I felt it this time, especially so, probably because I haven't done it in a while, was that... Once you close your eyes, you get relaxed and the water becomes still. You sort of feel like you're laying completely flat, which you are, but you're floating. Uh, you feel like you're on a turntable or you're on a record kind of spinning around clockwise or counterclockwise. And it's your senses just going crazy, like trying to figure out which direction you're in. And I always have to like just touch my finger to the side to reorient myself for a second but then get a little bit more relaxed um, start to focus on my breathing uh, at first I was a little bit too hot but I think that was mainly because uh, the shower that I had taken before I was it was just like way too hot my core body temperature was up so when I got into the tank which is already a fairly warm atmosphere I was a little bit overheated but uh, once I got past that initial phase, I um, was just focusing on my breathing, and then, boom, all of a sudden I I sat straight up, and I had this moment of panic, and I realized what had happened, I had actually fallen asleep, like I, I'd, I'd been doing uh, what well, I was working that day, and I went to do the float around like 7 in the evening, I was a little bit tired. 
but I had fallen asleep. So that was actually the first time that that had happened for me. Um, and it was, as I said, quite warm in there. So I think I just got kind of put out from the tiredness and the, the warmness of it all. So I, I cracked the door open a little bit just to get a, a breeze coming in and that made it a bit more comfortable for my body temperature. And I was in there for about, uh, I'd say about two hours. And in the second part, when I really got into it, um, I don't know, I was just felt like I was in that state before you go to sleep. Like say you're laying in bed and you're not quite awake, you're not quite asleep, but you're in that middle ground. And when you're in bed, it only lasts for a couple minutes because then eventually you fall asleep. But the cool thing about the tank is that you have this whole chunk of time dedicated to exploring this, this brainwave, uh, this, this weird landscape that you find your mind in. And before I knew it, the music was coming back on and I actually thought that my, um, my session had been cut short or someone, uh, I don't know, I was taking too long or something. So I got out, I turned my phone back on, and sure enough, it had been over two hours. I couldn't believe how quick the time went just like that. But overall, um, great experience. Um, really enjoyed talking to Alan. Uh, Alan, that was the last one. Uh, really enjoyed talking to John, sorry. Great time in the tank. Very cool. Highly recommend. Um it's worth trying honestly just once even if you don't go back it's uh, it's really worth just going to pay the one time fee have your float see what it's like and judge for yourself if you like it go back great if not then oh well at least you tried it and checked it off the list either way thanks for listening to the podcast that's my little float report hope you enjoyed the episode if you want to find past episodes you can go to curiousjord.com Look up on the episodes page and you'll see the past uh, recordings there. You can also get them in the archives on any of the, of the podcast apps. Other than that, take care and uh, be safe. Be safe out there. Yeah, sure. <laughs>